Bullying of a thing starts from home. Because of bullying, children are afraid to go to school. Dragging those culprits, tear them apart because they don't want to call humans. And those school management that protected the image of the school instead of the life of this boy, there will no no peace. No Hello everyone, welcome back again to my YouTube channel, Eva Mom Cheese TV. Yes, it's quite uh, a long time I've not posted. Uh, I'm going to make video on that one, you know, to address some issues that made me not be posting for a long time. But in today's video, uh, I really want to talk about the trending video of the young boy that just passed on Sylvester or more on me. Uh, firstly, I uh, appreciate every one of you for staying tuned to watch this video. And first and foremost, I want to talk on four things and I really want to analyze them one after the other. Okay. Uh, and what are those things I really want to talk about? First is about bullying. The second one, the proprietors of schools. The third one, the teachers. And lastly, we, the parents. And firstly, the bullying. Bullying have been in boarding school from ages. So I am a victim of bullying in secondary school. And not just, I'm just talking based on what is trending. Maybe yes, maybe no. So, like I, the first day I stepped into secondary school, I was a boarder. I was living in dormitory, okay? See, the last day I left secondary school, I was also a boarder. I was living in boarding, okay? That was dormitory then. And when I saw this trending video, I cried. My condolence to the family of this late boy that just passed on. Can I say uh, it's not a time for the boy to leave this earth? Or maybe it's still the will of God uh, for such tragedy to happen. Maybe to be a big lesson to uh, many parents or to correct some mistakes in the school. So whichever way. Let us not allow ourselves, you know, to fall a victim again. Because a lot of things has been happening and the Nigerian government or the Ministry of Education or the Minister of Education, you know, is not doing anything about it. Such incidents has occurred in several occasions in many schools. And they didn't bother to address it properly. And that is why it keeps on happening. And because this bullying of a thing has to be stopped. When I mean stop, total stop. Let there be no senior and let there be no junior. Everybody's supposed to have equal right in school because they are all learners. Everyone there has come to learn. So I shouldn't say the reason why they differentiate the junior students and the senior students. I'm coming to that. Because, let me give an example. Bullying here in Europe is totally no. Do you know why I say that? If a child is a bully, it can deprive that child many things. For instance, they are going for a school trip or maybe they are visiting a place and every child is saying, I'm not going because of this particular child. The same child says the same thing. Almost all the pupils in that class or all the students, whether, okay, I'm talking about primary school, say they don't want to go because of you. Even in secondary school, because of you, they will call the parents of that child and tell you that your child cannot go because all the children are afraid of your child. So what do you do? You talk to your child. 
you try to stop that bully. Because this bully of a thing starts from home. Maybe some parents don't see it as bullying. Some take it as a strong child. Correct this bully from home. So as for school, it's not if it is possible. It is possible if the government or the proprietor of schools put a stop on all this. At least children will be happy to go to school. Because of bullying, children are afraid to go to school. You wake up a child to dress that child to go to school, the child will begin to cry because it cannot speak. I will tell you the reason why, why we go for that. So bullying did not start today and we have to do something about it. If not, or if care is not taken, such incident will keep on occurring and we don't pray for that. So let me go back to number two, which is uh, the proprietors of schools. And um, let us not forget that anybody that opens school has the interest of his or her profits at heart. Don't forget that. Number one, before you try to open school, what they have in mind is the profit they're going to make in that school. And if you're so lucky, your school falls in the category of the big man's school. You have made it. And don't forget, as they are paying heavily for this tuition fee, they assumed that their children's welfare are secured or are being taken care of, whichever way. The second one that every proprietor's owner of the schools has at heart, bringing out the best students in the country, if not the whole world, yes. But don't forget that private school is someone's business. So a lot of all these proprietors open the school. Some of them are in abroad. They just appointed the head teacher or the principal. They only call to check on how is the school moving. What do you expect to hear? Yes, sir. everything is being under control. We are having many intake and you'll be happy. Do you bother to come back and go one-on-one -on -one and meet students you don't even know? Ask them questions. None of them, I believe, do that. They believe on what the principal or the head teacher, you know, tells them, the information. Don't forget, the head teacher, some of them bully the teachers because when they see an effective teacher trying to tell them one thing or the other, they become afraid. Maybe if she's an opportune, you know, to speak with the proprietor of the school, I might lose my position. And they look for one thing or the other to sack the teacher from the school. And that is the problem we have in Nigeria. Having the interests of your school at heart, not the welfare or the life of those children in your care. Selfish interest of the owner of the schools, especially private school. I'm talking about the private school because to talk about the government school, that one is man no man business. If you know someone, then you'll be promoted. When you have nobody, you'll be stagnant and that's your position. I'm talking about the owners of the school. You appointed a head teacher. It's not your fault because you want to make a profit. And people are paying heavily for their children to learn and for you to protect their children because they believe so much for someone to pay one million naira timely this tuition fee one million naira timely is not for the year so if they're paying one million naira just for a term in a year they pay three million naira and that is a lot of money many parents are struggling to pay just five thousand naira token for their children to go to school. Yeah, those children have been sent out of the school. They, they cannot afford to pay the 5,000 Naira 
on the resumption day. And someone paid 1 million naira. And you did not protect the interests of that child. Rather, you protect the image of your school. That is wickedness. Because a lot of things happen in school. The proprietors or the head teachers or the principal, we call the teachers. Not to allow this thing, you know, to exit from the school gates. And the same information, the teachers go straight to the students to pass the same information to those young stars. Don't allow this to get to your parents. We have sorted everything. Everything has been taken under control. If you do that, you'll be in trouble with the principal. If you do that, you'll be in trouble with the proprietor. And what do you expect them to do? They will shut up. They won't talk. Let me tell you one incident that happened. This video might be long, but I need to pour up my mind. When my second, when my third child was about to enter primary one, you know, here in Europe, they go for total control. They will test their eyes, the ability to understand signs, things like, you know. So some of you don't know why they check, remove their clothes to, you know, search, you know, to check proper control to see if some parents are bullying their children. You know, some will not like to flog those children where the teachers can see the scare, okay? Some decide to flog them at their back so that when they put on clothes, they'll cover it. White people, they know all those things. So there was a time my daughter was playing and she fell. I didn't even know what really happened, but only thing I had her shouted. So I ran out and uh, she got some little bruises, you know, above her, beside her heart here, yeah, but just the flesh. It wasn't deep cut, no. So little blood, but I was afraid. I didn't see her. She, I didn't see how she fell. So uh, I took her to, the, to her doctor and they checked. They said, no, it's just a minor injury. There was nothing. That is one thing I like about them. So after like three weeks or four weeks, so she got an appointment uh, for control. So I took her for the control and I've forgotten this incident. So the doctor detested her ability to recognize things, all of that, you know. So when the doctor asked her to remove her clothes, which she did, so the doctor searched bags, you know, search her under if there's anybody have been, you know, touching her private parts and so nothing like that. So the, immediately the doctor saw that scar beside her heart. And there was this kind of suspicious look. The doctor looked at me. I was like, oh, why is she looking at me like this? Immediately the doctor, you know, backed me and they cover my child not to see me and that was when she asked her what happens to you here so she said did anything happen to me there i didn't know so she was still lying there and she just called mom did anything happen to me i said i don't know what was that so the doctor did not allow her to see me you know the reason maybe the doctor thought i was the one that you know they did so so the child will not you know have eye contact with me Maybe by looking at me, for me not to say, don't talk, or remember what I taught you, you know, all those stuff. He said, no, I now remember. That was what my chap, my daughter said. I remember that day I was playing with my kid sister. So I was trying to catch the balloon up and she mistakenly, you know, pushed me because we were playing. She wanted to catch the ball also. I said, okay. And I told the doctor, yes. I remembered. I took her to her doctor, but said everything was okay. And the doctor said, okay. And that was when she shifted. I was able to see my daughter. So in this kind of situation, some children, when they bully them, don't talk. If you tell anyone, I'm going to deal with you. I will kill you. So once you ask them, this word, or should I say, the bullying, will stand in front of them in their memory don't forget and they will say nothing but if you are an adult you're supposed to know when a child is living in fear 
the behavior, the attitude, everything about that child will change. So, in this case of this boy, he has earlier told the mom to change school for him. But they said they did not see any reason to change school for him because he has sister in that school. And the elderly one passed out from that school also. So why should they change the school? Now, let me tell you, coming to the teachers. Teachers are meant to be with these children. And when a teacher doesn't like your child, any little opportunity will bully that child. Even though there is fracas or maybe you have noticed it and you complain to school authorities and you are sure that everything is being taken under control, no, take your child away. Because as a junior student, he or she will fear the school rules, whether you like it or not. Uh, but it is certainty that he or she must fear one of the school rules. And they will not treat it as a minor because of the accumulated anger or the bullying they have for him already. They will bully that child. So that is it. So teachers, you are being paid to watch over the children. You are just not just paid for you to teach. Teaching and monitoring those children's mood is also your duty. So teaching job is not an easy task. If you're a lazy type, you cannot fit in in that job. Just quit teaching. You must be up and doing. It's not only making your lesson notes to pass what you have in there. Monitor the mood of those children. Find out whether they are bullied at home or even in the school. It's also your duty. You're not just there to write on the board and explain what you have written and you just go and sit down. You have to monitor those children, the kind of mood they are. So let me go straight to the parents. Oh, yes. Many parents do this mistake because if I change my daughter's school or my, if I change my child's school, my competitors will think I have no money again. You know, I cannot afford my competitors. So your competitors will think you cannot afford the school fees anymore. That is why you withdraw your child from the school. Say yes. Within you, you know you can afford that school fees 10 times. But who do you want to impress? You want to impress your competitors and lose your child. Mind you, in the journey of pregnancy, they were not there with you. You were alone and whoever you believed on. In my journey of pregnancy, I was with my God and I alone. So the same to you. So I don't impress anybody when it comes to the life of my kids. So, and I think that is what you're supposed to bear in mind. Nine months journey be nine days. So you should not you should not fail in your duty as a mother when your child's mood change. If you are a good mother, if you are really a mother, you will know. I didn't say you shouldn't send your child to boarding school. Instead, you will hire a nanny that will come and kill your children in secret. Send them to boarding school if you have the money. But once you go to visiting school, monitor that child. Check his mood. If you're not comfortable, take your child and leave the school. Forget the school fees. If you're alive, you can get that money in 24s or more than. But if you lose that child, even if you give birth to another one, that one cannot go overnight. I have seen a lot of friends, a lot of family members that have gone to visit their children in boarding schools. I'm talking about in Nigeria. They saw that the condition of their child, <laughs> they can't even sleep if they leave that child there. They go straight to the principal, I am taking my child. That is the end of her stay in this school. What happened? Nothing. Look at my child. I cannot. No, we'll handle it. They said no. 
They took their children and left from visiting. They took that child. They forgot body, bed, everything in the school. Maybe they can let her go and pack it or not. So why should they say, let me manage after this time? Time wait for anybody. A minute is too late. When you notice anything that can danger the life of your child, please, I know things are hard. But it's better your child not to go to school, stay with you at home. You pass the knowledge the much you can than to sell it to someone and pay heavily one million naira for someone to use the money, your hard-earned money, to kill your child for you. Who loses then? It's not a must. You must please everybody. Life is not a competition. Okay? Don't try to entice anybody. Because those are enticers. If anything goes wrong, they will be the one to talk. And don't forget, life is of two parties. The positive ones and the negative ones. And what should you do? Neglect the negative ones and focus on the positive ones. Because if you do A, people want you to do B. You try to please B, displease the A. So what do you do? Do what is right. Whatever it takes to protect your children, do that. Okay? So let just not because of show off. Because I want to tell them I can afford the school fees. You lose this your children. Because you want to show the world. You got the cash. You can afford the school fees. So if you are watching me here and you have watched that viral video, how that boy garnished his teeth in Paris, full of blood, before he passed off. I know how you feel. You feel like dragging those corporates, tear them apart because they don't want to call humans. And those school management that protected the image of the school instead of the life of this boy, there will know no peace until they ask for forgiveness and seek the face of God. Because why I said it was too late for the parents of this child to save this boy. The school, that is my own point of view in this matter. They were trying to protect the image of their school. They were trying to cover up because it's something they see they cannot manage. If they try to protect, to go, if they try to go further, that boy is going to pass on in that school. And that is what they don't want. So that people will not say, a child died in Darwin's college. Hey, you know, it brings a bad image to the school. Oh, yes. And that is when they call the parents to come and carry the corpse of that boy. Because the chances of that boy to survive is just a percent. And you know what it means. So you see the pains people cause to other people families because of their selfish interest that is what i call it selfish interest so parents be careful don't use your hard earned money to pay someone to kill your child for you all in the name of my child is in one of the expensive school my child is in school that is meant for the riches Okay, it's very painful. If you watch that video, you will shed tears. It might not touch you because it's not your brother. It's not any of your relative son. But don't forget, life is of two faces. Pray you don't encounter such. May God console that family and have mercy or not. And those of us that still have our children in boarding school, please try to do proper checkup on your children. Okay? So in case you like this video and uh, you think this video educates you, 
don't hesitate to share to friends and family. Don't forget to like also. So this is Eva Mom Cheese TV. Thank you for watching. Thank you for giving me your time to listen. See you in my next video. God bless you. Bye.